Hello, I'm Milo Mills. I'm with Northside Music Company in Lafayette, Indiana. I'm going to tell you about some of the things to look for when you're shopping for a used piano. You know, there's a lot of pianos out there. Some of them are really nice, some of them are awful. And if you don't know very much about pianos, it's sometimes it's hard to tell the good ones from the bad ones. I've been to auctions where a piano that's worth several thousand dollars goes for five bucks. And I've likewise been to auctions where a piano that I wouldn't give five bucks for has gone for several thousand dollars. So, first of all, we'll go through some of the sizes of pianos. So you have just the general terminology down. The piano I'm standing next to here is called a spinet. It refers to the height of it. Spinets are the shortest pianos. They were made most commonly from about 1940 through the 1980s. Uh, and uh, they're almost unheard of new today. Uh, it's a size that was very popular. People still come in looking for them, but they had troubles making them sound very good, and play very well. There was a, a, a bit of a bias against them for a while because of that, uh, but they're still popular because of their size. This is a console piano. It's a little bit taller. Quick and dirty things to look for without getting your tape measure out. The music rack, this piece, comes about even with the top, within an inch of the top, to above or below. That's generally a console piano. The last piano we looked at, the spinet, the music rack stuck up above the top three or four inches. Okay, So this is just a little bit taller than the spinet. This is the common size piano made today in the world. Um, this has been made for about 40 or 50 years has been a common size piano. This is a studio piano. So the next size up again, studios, uh, there are two forms of studios. There's, there are institutional studios today, which is something similar to this, although well, this is kind of a light color, but it's, it's something that is kind of designed to be bomb proof. It's made for uh, churches and schools, and you know, you know, something that the janitor can roll around without damaging it, but that plays nicely for someone who actually knows how to use it. And when they make an institutional studio, some of the things they do is they don't have music racks on them commonly because that's something that can get broken off. They typically have locks on them so you can keep kids out of them if you need to. And they typically have double caster rubber wheels or full legs with toes or both in this case uh, that make it easier to roll around and less likely to get damaged. Uh, but the height of this gives it a little better sound. Now we also have decorator studios which is something that is pretty, or sometimes the gloss black ones, but they're the same height as this. They give you the string length, but they're really not designed to be moved around. They're just giving you some better sounding piano, but still in a home version. But this is a studio. Okay, the last one we looked at was a studio. Now this is an upright. It's the tallest of the pianos. Uh, uprights were, the, the, the current design of uprights came about in about the 1880s. Um, and this size, this style, really kind of slowed down in the, in the 40s when spinets became popular. But they still make, uh, make full uprights. This is a brand new piano. This is considered a full upright, a professional upright they call it. Um, and they make them, uh, and they like them still, because the strings are long enough that it sounds like uh, smaller grand pianos. It has a really good sound to it. Uh, so this is a brand new instrument. So you've got the sizes of pianos. Um, now, one of the main things we look for, everybody calls us on a regular basis looking for, to sell old pianos or sell something they've got. And they mean well, but they always call and say that they've got a, a nice piano, a beautiful piano, whatever adjective they'd like to use. And they've taken really good care of it, they say, and they're just not using it and they want to sell it. Without trying to scam you, well-meaning people, what they really mean is that they have a piano that they've dusted and the dog hasn't chewed the leg off of it, but it's been neglected. Kind of like if you have a car and you don't change the oil in 10,000 miles or 50,000 miles or pick the number, the longer it goes between the oil changes, the higher the chance it has of, of failures, right? Uh, and the piano is the same way. So the first thing that we ask those people on the phone uh, and you should be asking, is when was it last tuned? doesn't matter if they say, oh, it sounds fine. A good piano shouldn't sound bad even if it hasn't been tuned in a while. What, the, what you want to know is it had regular maintenance. Well, yearly tunings are considered bare minimum. If you get on the, on the internet and you look at the Tuners Guild, they'll say four times a year. But pianos are supposed to be tuned regularly. 
If you let them go too long between tunings, it messes up the strings. It, it, it creates problems and shortens the lifespan of the piano. So if you don't know anything else about pianos and you're looking for a piano, find something find that looks like looks like something you want in your living room. That's important. But find something that's been tuned regularly. If it hasn't been tuned regularly, and you're going to run into a lot of them like that, now you have to start getting technical. You have to look at several different fun features and functions and decide if they're in good shape or not. And I can give you some basics of what to look for. If you get into something that's too complicated or you want help, I would suggest you call us or a local tuner. Have them come and look at the piano and tell you what shape it's in. Because I have seen way too many times people pay money for a piano, haul it home, and then find out that it's got some major problems and they have to spend a lot of money to make it work and they just throw it away. So, first we're going to look at, or well, the things we're going to look at, soundboards, pin blocks, uh, strings, and then the action. The four basic things, three of those are most important, but four things to look at when you're looking at a used piano that hasn't been tuned regularly and you need to consider whether it's worth money or not. Okay, we're going to start with soundboards. The soundboard is a thin piece of wood, less than a quarter of an inch thick. A good soundboard is made out of solid spruce and it runs the whole back frame of the piano. This soundboard runs from back in here over to here, top to bottom, and it is so thin that if you had it out of the piano, if I had it in my hands, I could just break it. Uh, to give it some strength, they put ribs on it. Now, I should point out that, our, that good, good soundboards, I said, are made out of solid spruce. This one's not a solid spruce soundboard. This is a laminated soundboard. It's still made out of spruce, but it's basically spruce plywood. And it is a poorer soundboard, and one of the easy indicators here, one of the, one of the ways to tell, is that the grain is running this way, not perpendicular to these ribs. If they're really trying to stop the thing from splitting, they put the ribs on perpendicular to the grain. So this one behind me here is a solid spruce soundboard. This is actually a laminate soundboard. <coughs> Some of the newer ones, they still use laminates, but they put the grain in the right direction and it's harder to tell. Laminate soundboards are, are poorer because the sound doesn't travel through them quite as well. They're not terrible, they're, they're decent, but they're not as good as a solid spruce soundboard. So when you buy any expensive brand, you buy a Steinway, you buy a Charles Walters, uh, you get solid spruce soundboards. Uh, let's see here. The soundboard, the function of the soundboard is to amplify the sound of your piano. So if you had a piano and you took the soundboard out of it, the piano would still play, you'd still have to tune it, the notes would still work okay, but you'd have to put the ear, your ear up against the cabinet of it to hear it. And I'm going to demonstrate here, this is my tuning fork. I'm a piano technician and this is out of my toolkit. Here's what a tuning fork sounds about, well, just by itself. And here's what the soundboard does. It amplifies that little sound Okay, and so the strings on the other side of the soundboard are attached to the soundboard and when you play it, that piece of wood amplifies the sound so that you can hear the piano. A good soundboard has an average lifespan of 60, 50, 60 years typically. And what they do, they're glued all the way around the edges and they dry out. And so when a soundboard gets old, it dries, it shrinks a little bit. It's glued all the way around the edge, it can't come off the edges, or it shouldn't, <laughs> unless it's something really wrong. And so what it does is it pulls apart as it dries, it shrinks. And these are all good soundboards. But you'll look, and, 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 and on a bad one, you'll find a crack that runs underneath the sand, the, these, these ribs. And sometimes you can feel it, sometimes you can just see it. But, but that crack is kind of like a blown speaker, if you find one. Uh, if you're familiar with, with stereos or, or something with a blown speaker, it still plays, still works okay. If you turn the volume down, uh, you may not notice it, but the louder it gets, the more distorted it gets. And the soundboard, if it gets a crack in it, will do the same thing. So at some certain volume or in some certain area of the piano, you'll get a buzzing vibration, typically. And that's, that's what the crack in the soundboard does. So that's something to avoid. It can be fixed, but it's very expensive to fix it correctly. So if a piano has a cracked soundboard, you have to make a decision. Is it cheap enough to still make it worthwhile to get? Or is that a critical part that's going to say, oh, forget it, I want a piano that's in better shape than that? Soundboards. Next, we'll look at uh, strings. All right, so we've gone through the soundboard. Now we're going to talk about the strings. Strings have a lot of tension on them. 
Uh, the reason I said earlier, one of the reasons uh, for, to check and see if it's been tuned is that it should be regulated and kept at a fairly stable pitch, and that's what the tunings do. If it hasn't been, um, first of all, you have a chance of breaking strings when you go to tune it. Secondly, there is a point in which they start breaking. These strings are all original. You can tell a piano where they've had breaking strings, usually, because they'll look different. If you just stare at them and you'll see a bunch of steel and copper strings at the bottom, that's normal. But you'll see one that's bright and shiny and all the rest that are dull. That usually indicates that they've replaced a string. If they've replaced one or two strings, that's a bad sign. Uh, strings are all the same age. They have approximately the same amount of tension on them for their sizes. And if you've replaced one or two, then the other ones are close. So it's kind of like buying a piano on its last legs. You, you get a couple strings broken, you're going to get a couple more when you go to tune it next time, possibly. Uh, strings. The next is the pin block and the pins. This piece of wood up here is called the pin block. On a lot of pianos, they cover this up with a piece of felt or veneer. You can't see this piece of wood, and it's really not critical that you can see it, but you know that it's there. These pins are two and a half inches long. They're really fine threaded screws is what they are. They go through a hole in this cast iron plate into the chunk of wood called the pin block. Pin blocks are all very hard hardwoods uh, made to hold those pins really tightly. Just like the soundboard we were talking about earlier, wood dries out, the pin block dries out. And it can get to the point where eventually it dries out to the point where the, string, the pins aren't tight enough anymore. Kind of like if you have a wooden chair at your, at your uh, dining room table and it gets old and it gets wobbly, sometimes you can tighten the screws up. Uh, you have to do something to take up you know, how much they've dried. When these get bad, when this gets dried out, I'll put my tuning wrench on here to tune it, and I'll pull on the tuning wrench to tighten it, and I let go, and the wrench just spins backward. It can no longer hold the tension of those strings. Um, they can do a couple things to buy you time to get by with a pin block that's going bad, uh, one of which is replacing the pins with larger pins. And depending on how they do it, they could go through and replace, you know, a couple here and there. And kind of like the strings, you'll see a, sh a couple shiny pins or a couple pins that are a different color that stand out. They don't look the same as all the rest. So really what you're looking for is uniformity, strings and pins. Something else you can look for in that is to simply play a scale. If the piano hasn't been tuned in a while, it might all be out of tune, but you want it to be consistently out of tune, if that makes sense. So if you're playing along and it goes... and everything seems in order, playing approximately the notes they're supposed to, great. If you, however, are playing a piano that hasn't been played or tuned, doesn't matter if it's in six weeks or 20 years, and one note seems really odd, it's way out of tune and all the rest are pretty good, that is an indicator that there might be something wrong, that maybe that pin is loose and it's not holding tune as well as all the strings around it. Uh, I'm trying to think if I, so, so if you're playing along and you go, that's an exaggeration, I played a note off the, but if, if you're playing all of them in a row and one note is low or way out from the rest, be wary, that's uh, uh, an indication there's, possibly something wrong there. Uh, so we've gone through the soundboard, the strings, and the pin block. Those are the most critical parts. Those are the parts that should last an average of 60 years, less on some of the cheaper pianos, and are going to be most affected by regular tuning. If you keep the piano tuning, tuned, you keep the piano in a regulated environment, you take care of it right, most pianos last over 50, 60 years. The last part, and usually the only the part, the other part that people look at, is the action and the keys and how they're working. And the, the, the funny part of that is, is they matter less than those previous three things I talked about. So if you get to a house and there's one key that's stuck down all the time, or you play it and a couple of the keys are sluggish, or you open the top and a, a hammer's stuck down or something, those are all things that can be fixed usually we easily, not always, but usually fairly easily. So that is less of a problem than the strings and the pens and the soundboard. But usually when people go, that don't know anything about pianos go looking for pianos, they hear the thing where people say, oh, I haven't tuned it in a long time, and they don't think anything of that, and it's a big deal. 
But they do look at the piano and they say, oh, there's two notes stuck down. That's probably a terrible piano. And that may not be a big deal at all. So these are just a couple things you can look at, make you a little more informed if you go looking at a piano out of Craigslist or eBay or newspaper or something. Um, if you find one and you're just not sure, call us or call your local tuner. We can come out and take a look at it. Northside Music has in stock over 600 pianos and I don't know two-thirds or half of them at least are used pianos so we have an awful lot of them not only are they for sale but we could we're, la we're happy to talk to you happy to show you things we can show you some things to look at we can we can give you some examples of things so give us a call stop by we'd love to talk to you